just want to talk about for a minute a little bit of the mass hysteria that's just starting to creep in because of the attention and particularly some of the media attention that's been given to Black Lives Matter. So whether it's the movement, whether it's because, you know, you've got far more black people talking about their experiences, but what's happening now is you've got far more organisations who are responding to the movement by talking about what they are doing specifically to address this. So yesterday I talked about the impact of coronavirus in terms of jobs and the economy. And what I've noticed is, and I don't know about you because you might have seen this as well, right? Is there are a lot more individuals, whether it's they're commenting on articles online from like the broadsheets, like Daily Mail is just a hot bed of messiness when it comes to the comment sections. But also I've been seeing it in the Financial Times, I've been seeing it on LinkedIn. And it's this general fear that white people, particularly white men, I have to say, like, you know, I'm sure there might be other people, but this, um, this is what I'm seeing and hearing the most, who feel like it's a situation of they've got to hide their wife and kids because guess what, the black people are coming. Do you know what I mean? And so they're now talking about the fact that, you know, they're struggling to get work. And these are very senior people as well as, you know, what I call the, the, the average person, you know, like I'm the average person, you know. So th there's a, from here to here, and they are talking about the fact that there is high unemployment, that there's not enough jobs to go around. And in, in the same breath, they are also saying, well, you know, and the challenges that we're going to face now that, dare I say, we are, we are about to be um, extinct. I think somebody used a phrase, like, honestly, somebody used a phrase, they're going to be about to be extinct. And they were saying that, you know, I know that there is no point now me applying for this, this and this job because they're basically a lot of these companies are only looking to hire black people right that's been said over in the US but it's also been said here in the UK I mean you know what I actually don't know what to say but you know I even shared an article er earlier on in the week where there was a lot of this almost like anti-diversity and inclusion sentiment you know that's that's probably the best way of phrasing it actually because this sort of concern and these sorts of conversations will be happening within your business and they will also be happening with potential applicants you know People now have been fine when, as black people, we just stayed in our lane and we did not step out. We were seen but not really heard. People were fine when they can watch us play basketball on a court, when they can watch us win 100 metre races, when they can watch us play tennis. They are also fine when they can see us drop it like it's hot to music. Do you know what I mean? And they can go and see one or two of us in a blockbuster film. They're also fine if they can see only one or two of us on a TV show. But now that everyone is starting to realise that the world is changing, and rightly so, because representation matters, do you know what I mean? And, and what some people are forgetting, that we, are, we have historically lived in spaces and lived in a, an environment where the dominant colour that we see of everybody has been white. And then, and then you go down in, in different shades until you eventually get to black. And then even within that, off you go, right? So now that the tide is changing, companies are more vocal because, you know, customers, communities, employees are expecting them to be more vocal. People are now being more aggressive, more open about the fact that they do not like the way the tide is turning. Do you know what I mean? And that includes very senior people. They do not like the fact that we've got to talk about this black stuff. They don't like the fact that black people, it's felt like we are getting preferential treatment. I mean... They don't, but they don't like it. They're being really honest, they don't like it. Do you know what I mean? They want to go back to the way things were, where they could pretend that the initiatives that they were putting in place in their business made a difference. And now they know that it's not making a difference, and now they realise they've got to spend time, energy, effort and money to fix this. You know, that's an angle. But also, there is the very individual, very personal element of fear. A lot of people are feeling fearful and I'll be really honest, like I was talking to my partner about this the other day and I was like, like fundamentally, what do you think, you know, because he's like the voice of all white people. <laughs> and I was like, what do you think is driving this? And he said, fundamentally, I just think people are afraid. He said, I think they think that like, um, <laughs> he was like, I think they think that black people, you're all going to band together and there's going to be an uprising and then we're all going to be turfed out. And I was like, are you seriously? He said, listen, 
that's fundamentally, he said, that's what I think. Like, whether some people agree with that or not, but he said, that's what I think. And I don't think he's far wrong, you know. What's really interesting, particularly in the UK, is that people want to say to us, like, you know, I don't understand why you're complaining about the fact that you're not in management positions, you're not on boards, because there's not that many of you. So do you know what? Like, let's focus and we'll, we'll get 12%, 12 or 13% of you in the business. So then that's proportionate to how many black people there are in the UK. So you go, OK, right. I don't accept that because, again, if race is not an issue, why are you so bothered about the percentages? And why are you so bothered about making a hard line? But the other side of it is, well, if that is the case, why is everybody so pressed? Why does it matter? Because the reality is, even if every single working age black person was in employment, let's imagine that we all fit the working age at 12 or 13% here in the UK. That's a pretty large number of opportunities that are left open to everybody else. So as a proportion, we are not that big. So if we're not that big, why is everybody so upset? Do you know what I mean? They're upset with companies giving the time and attention. They're upset with black people coming together. They're upset, they're upset with black people collaborating. They are also upset by the fact that they feel like we are taking opportunities from them, but they're not being cognizant of for decades. We have not been able to have those opportunities because they have protect, been protected for predominantly white people. It's just one of those situations where I feel like, you know, it would be remiss of me not to talk about this, these elements, you know, because everyone always likes to believe like at some point I'll be like, you know, sweetness and light and fluffiness and be talking about, you know, the fact that we're making progress, the fact that, you know, I can look myself in the mirror and feel like I'm doing a great job and, you know, and I'm keep talking about it and I keep talking about it. But there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this space there's a lot of work to be done to change people's attitudes their belief systems and challenge them about some of the inherent assumptions that have are baked into the foundation of how they view the world because it's not enough just to give people a book or to you know show them one of my videos and think that the, the penny is going to drop and even if the penny does drop like it's like dropped halfway because there's still a whole lot of work underneath to go well now that you know this what are you going to do differently you know and I think somebody posted on um, one of my LinkedIn posts and you know what she hit the nail on the head when she said you know in this yes we don't want to be like dragging people into the depths of depression by saying you know these things aren't right this still isn't right this still isn't right this still isn't right but she said the danger is if you only want to focus on the good stuff you know like incremental improvements you know let's not even talk about the fact that the government point blank rejected to decolonize secondary education point blank rejected to bring more balanced black history into the curriculum they just wanted to be able to talk about slavery and i think one other thing this is what we're up against this is what we're up against right and what she was saying is, therefore, you end up surrounding yourself by people who believe and think the same way as you do. And because we are all surrounding ourselves now and, and holding hands with other people who think the same way that we do, i.e. the world has got to change. There is no room for racism. There's no room for sexism. There's no room for homophobia. There's no room for ableism. There's no, you know, all of this stuff. There is no room for that. But by definition of us spending all our time talking and sharing things that has everybody go, yes, that's right, yes, that's right, I agree, I agree, I agree. We can kid ourselves into thinking that the world is making progress because we only view progress according to the bubble that we are sitting in. And so every time, as much as I would like to, oh my God, think just not one more thing, it's, you know, somebody's foolishness, nonsense, and, 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 it is a reminder that we are, this is an uphill battle. This is not a level, we are not on a level playing field, you know, as black people, as allies, as people who are supportive and are pro-equality and pro-equity practices to address this. We are fundamentally pushing against a majority, particularly here in the UK, who may be not racist, like they might be like half anti-racist, but they may never get across the whole bridge because of the fact they're worried about the impact this is gonna have on them. And this will be people at your entry level. This will be people who are line managers. This will be people who are heads of department. This will be people who are senior directors. And the danger with that is they are also the people that influence a lot of decisions 
right now about how black people can or cannot progress within a company. So to some extent, it's all right to say, well, you know, don't pay attention because we will weed them out. But a lot of businesses won't weed them out. We know that, you know, we know that. So again, this is a watch out to say that we cannot afford to be complacent. We cannot think for a moment that our time is done in terms of sharing our voices, speaking up against what's wrong, pointing out things that aren't right. You know, even if black is not trending, even if anti-racism is not trending, wrong is still wrong. And for anybody who's thinking and, and you know, thinking to themselves, Jesus, I've been at this for like two months. I'm tired. I'm tired of talking about it. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Well, I will say, do you know what? Guess what? We're tired of living it. And for a lot of us, we're living it and talking about it and doing and trying to reflect change. We don't have the option to just log off. Do you know what I mean? We don't. If for us, I wish it was that easy that we can just unfollow people on LinkedIn, unfollow people on Instagram and carry on with our lives as normal but we don't have the option to do that because even if we do that we've still got to step outside of our houses we still got to apply for a job we've still got to try and find new clients we've still got to do all of these things within a backdrop of a society that is not equal and fundamentally is balking against putting in equitable practices you know it's for the same reason why i am still getting people tagging me in posts or sending me messages to talk about my anti-racist you know sorry, my reversed racist um, search for an intern and, you know, how, how can I be only looking for black people when I'm talking about, you know, all of that stuff. It, this is the exact same reason. So, you know, I'm giving my views of the world with, you know, the kids making a whole load of noise behind me because I just feel like it's an important point to make in that, you know, people haven't still universally got the memo but also even if they haven't got the memo right now if that fear is allowed to if we if we stay complacent and thinking that you know by definition of all the attention getting this is going to get fixed that fear will still turn into some sort of action in some way shape or form even in action even in action oh. so i hope that makes sense like you know listen it ain't easy out here in these streets it is not easy but we have to keep going we have to keep questioning we've got to keep asking the questions and we've got to also understand that not everybody just because we can surround ourselves by universally people who get it that isn't the case